Hey guys, it's Danny. So recently on my channel, I've been doing a number of unboxings of luxury items that I've purchased on eBay. This video is to demonstrate that there are risks when you do this, and it's important to be aware of what they might be before you commit to buying. Paula from With A Touch Of Luxury did ask about my process of purchasing on eBay, and I did promise her that I will do a video. In this video, however, I'll just be touching on some of the aspects because I have another video in the pipeline going through my process from start to finish. So if you interested in a video like that certainly do subscribe hit that notification bell so that you'll be informed when that video is uploaded and Paula thank you for your patience this video is going to be more of a story time because I think it's a funny video and I think it's worth sharing and before I jump into the meat of the video for those of you who do shop on other platforms can you please share below what they might be do they give you full confidence especially if you live in Australia I would be super super interested firstly the item in question was a Louis Vuitton mini pochette in Damier Azor. So a lot of you know that I went on this mini pochette kick, especially after the October price increase. After the October price increase, I thought, holy cow, okay, better stock up. And of course, there was another price increase in February 2022. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that prior to the October 2021 price increase, the classic Louis Vuitton mini pochette was 545 Australian dollars. And now in February 2022, a Louis Vuitton mini pochette now costs 1,080 Australian dollars. That is a 98% price increase in under four months. I have to say no regrets here buying up my mini pochettes. I did initially try to get mini pochettes via my Louis Vuitton essay but she couldn't get me any canvas pieces so I started looking on the pre-loved market. So I was in the middle of my mini pochette shopping spree when this one popped up so it was like the Dummy Azor Tahitian print I think that's how you say it but it's the Dummy Azor with the pink over it it's so so pretty its starting bid was quite a reasonable price something like 620 Australian dollars and the condition of the item was also really good and I thought to myself this bidding is just going to go through the roof don't bother so I just watched the item and I went and checked back on the item after the auction was over and it went for something like 650 Australian dollars bearing in mind that the retail price at the time was 785 Australian dollars so getting a mini pochette for below retail in really good condition that was unheard of. So obviously I was kicking myself because I was willing to pay more for that piece and I said to myself after that time, if you come across another piece that is in really good condition, just put down your highest bid and watch what happens. Then this listing came up, so pretty good condition, classic Dummy Azor Louis Vuitton mini pochette, a reasonable starting bid at 480 Australian dollars or thereabouts. So as per usual, I checked the seller's ratings. This particular seller didn't have a lot of ratings, they only had 24 five-star ratings. Now obviously the more positive ratings the person has, the more confident I feel about that seller. But if they don't, I don't necessarily hold that against the seller. Sometimes they're just someone who's starting out and often this is when you can get a really good deal. The other thing about this listing was that it was not listed as an authentic product. And with eBay, if you purchase an item that has not been specifically listed as authentic and you receive the item and you want to challenge it after that, if the original listing didn't indicate that it was an authentic item, it will then be subject to dispute and you may not get your money back. So what I did was then to message the seller on eBay and I said, can you please confirm that this item is authentic? And the response was, this item is 100% authentic. So I went ahead and put down my maximum bid as 560 Australian dollars and left it. There were others who were bidding against me but I ended up still being the highest bidder and I won the auction and I remember paying for the item on the 27th of December. Yes, this happened in December. I've been waiting to share this story with you guys. <laughs> In any case, it's the Christmas New Year period. At the time, I know that things happen really slowly and there's no post offices open. So I just waited. A week later, it was the 4th of January and that's a Tuesday. So in my mind, that's two working days into the new year already. I felt that it was strange that I haven't received notification that the item was at least posted. I then went to check the seller's account and there were no listings on the account. After that, I tried to send a message to the seller. In this situation, eBay would often prompt to ask what the issue is and I selected where is my item. In the free text box, I was able to type, hello, 
have you sent my item yet? So that message was sent off and I got an automatic response from eBay confirming that the message was sent and they also wrote that if the seller had not responded within the week, I can ask eBay to step in. So I left a reminder in my calendar for myself to chase it after a week had lapsed and through the week there was no response. So on the mark of one week, I was about to contact eBay and when I opened my eBay account, eBay had already gave me a full refund because the seller hadn't responded and I hadn't received my item. So that was nice. <laughs> so the whole saga from paying for the item to getting my refund was a total of two weeks. I have to say that was really efficient, so I was really pleased with that. I did lose some money though because the transaction was in US dollars eBay refunded me in US dollars as well and the Australian currency was just not in my favor that day and I lost 27 Australian dollars so in the grand scheme of things not much I'm glad that I got most of my money back and to be honest I was actually really glad that that transaction fell through because while I was bidding for that dummy Azor mini pochette my Louis Vuitton essay had offered me my blue Vernie Valentine's Day mini pochette and when I I saw the Valentine's Day edition mini pochette, I wished that I hadn't bought the Dummy Azor one. So in the end, it all worked out really well in my favor. So with transactions like these, of course, there's a risk of the seller ghosting you, but this can happen on any other platform. I am actually really curious what happened because the seller wouldn't have gotten the funds at all. Being someone who sells some knickknacks on eBay, I know that eBay holds on to the funds for a while because they would prefer for the buyer to receive the item to be happy with it before they release the funds to the seller. I mean, my best guess is they either changed their mind or they might have found a buyer who was willing to pay a higher price for it elsewhere. So I'm very glad that it was all a very seamless experience. I have continued to shop on eBay and there's another story about an eBay boo-boo coming up. I am waiting for that problem to be resolved before I share it with you guys. So stay tuned for that one. This upcoming one is a lot juicier. Now, if you feel like watching the unboxing of my Valentine's Day mini pochette that I did get and I'm really enjoying, go ahead and click over here.